Hello, I hope you're having a good day. I'm doing a voiceover because the audio was really bad. So I start out with all of my cultures that have been inoculated um, for 18 hours and I number each of them one, two, three and they're all biological triplicates. Um, <clears throat> and so the first step is I'm going to dilute them to 0 0.5 optical density. And to do that, I will um, take out 40 mils from each of the cultures and put it into a centrifuge tube. So I actually take out two 40 mil sets from each of the cultures. Um, and that is what I'm doing right now. I use a 50 milliliter pipette. Um, you can find those under the scale and then an electrical pipetter, um, which is above Mauricio's desk. It is important that you charge it once you're done using it. So I'm going to take the 40 mils out of each of the cultures like so. Um, try to make it so the tube itself, although it's sterile, doesn't hit the glass. Okay, and that is what I'm doing. So now I am pretty sure that I have um, paired, I have each one in a 50 mil conical tube. And so to go into the centrifuge, they have to be of equal weight and opposite of each other. Um, so in our lab, we do, they have to be within 50 milligrams of weight. So right now I'm just going to use the scale to counterbalance each of them. Um, so that they're 50 milligrams apart. So at this moment, it's really important that you pipette pretty accurately. So now I'm gonna take them to the centrifuge. Um, so you can turn it on in the back and make sure you log in the log book that you're using the centrifuge. Um, so I, for the first rounds, I use 5,000 RPM for five minutes and you basically just click speed and then change it and then click time and then change it. Perfect. And then to open it, you have to press the button and open the lid at the same time. You just unscrew the cap and um, Put them, put the ones of equal weight opposite of each other. So if you don't have enough, that's okay. Just make sure they are, they're blank. And then screw the cap back on. And then you can close it um, and start. And I just like to wait to make sure its state goes until 5,000 just to, cause, because usually it will stop or something if they're not properly balanced. Um, and then I do some cleaning or something in this next five minutes. So I'm pretty sure now I will have um, centrifuged my samples. Um, so I have to make, so to dilute it, I want about 250 to 300 milliliters of a diluted sample because you have um, five 40 mil samples. That comes out to 200 and it's always good to have a little bit extra. And so I basically just pour LB, about 250 to 300 mils, into um, the Erlenmeyer flask. And then I take my centrifuge to sample and I just remove all of the supernatant and then I put so that's what I'm doing right now and then I'll put about 15 mils of LB it really doesn't matter how much um, 
into the conical tube and I will use a vortex mixer and hopefully I end up showing you that it's usually on the side of the bio safety hood um, just to mix it all together just make sure afterwards like look at it to make sure it's properly mixed um, so you can actually tell the difference between the pellet it's like that pink thing versus when it's well mixed because you won't see the pellet on the bottom and so I checked it and then um, this becomes a little bit of a guess and check game so I have to so the first thing that I will do is I will put about 15 I'll use the sorry I'll take a mill of the LB I'll put it into a cuvette and I'll make sure it's a reference an important thing is you should never put like a one mil pipette into a larger bottle you should always transfer the lb into a 50 milliliter conical tube and then pipette from there that's just to prevent any contamination <clears throat> so then i will take i have a lot of samples so i will take the first and add in about like one conical tubes worth into the whole um, solution and then I'll measure the LB so I'll know if I overshot it or undershot it if I overshot it I'll just add more LB if I undershot it then I will um, then I will add more bacteria so when you do this for the first um, batch then you'll know um, just about how much you end up needing need to add to your sample. And you might have noticed when I pipetted, um, I didn't touch the pipette on the glass and that's to prevent contamination. So now I put in the cuvette, make sure the arrow is po pointing towards you. And then I press reference and then I check it to make sure it's zero. Um, and then I think right now I'm repeating the process to know how much more I need to add. So you can actually tell the difference between um, a 0.5 OD and like a normal. So 0.5 is on the left and the normal is on the right. That's just regular LB. And I usually use like sight to check um, what the OD is and then you kind of get to know it with a, over a while. So then I separate um, my samples into a 40 mil conical tube. And so there's five for each um, condition. And then I have gentamicin, so it's at a, a thousand X concentration, I believe. And then I'll put in 40 microliters of the gentamicin into the sample. Um, always make sure to vortex your antibiotic just to make sure that it's well mixed. So now I'll put in the 40 microliters into my sample and then I will vortex mix it. Now I have literally no idea what I am saying right here, but um, something to keep in mind is to always use a different pipette tip um, for each of the samples. So every time you use a new bacteria or a new antibiotic, always use a different pipette tip. It's better to be more sterile and more wasteful um, in general. So now I put the antibiotic into my sample and then I will vortex mix it for a good 10 to 15 um, seconds.